Hello and welcome to High Point Music's Gear Reviews. I'm Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you one of the coolest multi-effects I've seen in a long time, the Line 6 HX FX. It is the FX only version of their bigger Helix product, so it's aimed at people who are using an amplifier or an amp modeling system and really focuses on the qualities of sounds and effects you can get from the unit itself. I thought in today's episode I would show you turning it on, getting a few sounds out of it to start with, and do a quick little overview or run through of some of what it can do. If there is anything in particular you see that you'd like to hear a bit more of, let us know in the comments below. We'd love to hear if there's something you haven't seen or something that we maybe gloss over that you'd like more of. That would be really cool. And uh, yeah, we'll make some sounds and then in the further episodes down the track I'll go into a bit of a deeper dive with more specific focus on each of the effects, the routing, the switching, the MIDI, all of the other crazy cool stuff it can do. So first of all, I'm playing my Fender Stratocaster. Some neck. Uh, I'm running through the HX effects, so I'm just going into the left mono input out of the left mono output straight into the input of our two notes Laclean, and that's running off to our Ableton session. You can wire this up in stereo or the four cable method where you run it through an effects loop as well. And I will do that, but I'll do that in, a, uh, a, in one of the deep dive episodes, just to give you an idea of if you open this out of the box and plug it in your amp, what can you do with it straight away? So I should probably stop talking and make some noise. Uh, first thing you need to do, of course, is plug it in, make your connections, plug your power supply in, which is a Line 6 specific power supply. Uh, power switch on the back, turns the product on, and like any good DSP product, it's gonna start to boot like so. So clicks on, you hear the relays fire up, and at the moment, we're in preset mode. Uh, if you wanted to run with stop box mode, it is just a matter of pressing the edit button and then choosing some effects from here. Uh, because it's a bit easier to save a set of presets it's for me to show you later on, that's the first thing I'm gonna do. So I've got a preset selected over here on the side. All I'm gonna do is, you know, you could pick this preset or this preset, you can bank up, bank down, like so. Um, I've got a couple of sounds preset for a video I'm going to do later. So all I'm going to do is pick 32D and hit the edit switch once and we start with effectively a clean slate. Maybe the first thing you would want to check out on something like this is the modulation, reverb, distortion, delay effects. So I'll probably focus on those to begin with. In order to do so, we'll uh, pull up an overdrive. So big knob. Uh, to open the model list. So all we do is we press this large knob up here and as you'll be able to see we get a range of different effects types with a corresponding icon which will make a bit more sense why they give you that later on and uh, you press the button again to go into it. There are three categories mono effects, stereo effects and legacy effects. The legacy effects function is part of what they've brought in from the Line 6 4 series, which was their DL4, ML4, um, the FL4 filters, those great big, like, amazing multi-effect pedals, certainly for their time. I had the DL4 on my board for a long time, but that's what the legacy effects are. So, first of all, distortion. We're going to go into the distortion patch. I am only running in mono, so we click mono. And then we get a list of all the different overdrives that we can run through. There's a pretty big list here. Um, the Minotaur I know is the uh, is a style of the Clon Centaur, uh, or the Warpler Tumnus would be a similar pedal that we've had on the channel. So I'm going to pick the Minotaur, and straight up we've got our effect here on the top of the board with a gain, tone, and level parameter available. Uh, you can see that there are little brackets here on the side of the screen and those brackets correspond to this knob here or these set of knobs here. So bypass where the text goes out a little bit and the LED ring around the foot switch diminishes and then back on. And we 
get some overdrive. Uh, of course, it's pretty easy to just change those parameters now. Let's knock the level down a bit. Turn the gain up. More volume now, I've got a gain setting I like. Reasonably balanced. Sounds pretty good. Make it a little bit brighter because that's what, one of the reasons I use a clone. Maybe not that much. Uh, six out of ten. That's pretty crunchy. It sounds pretty good. Uh, so I like where that is for now. The next thing I would do is I would just hit the save button because I want to actually keep it where it is. Uh, I'm not going to change any of the naming of it or the preset names. I'm just going to hit save. Um, so now when I go back to our preset mode, I could go to this blank preset. There's nothing there. Go back to 32D, which is where we were. Hit edit and our Minotaur is still available to us. So that's our Minotaur. You can scroll through the effects more when you've got something assigned. So we could go to Scream 808, Tube Screamer. The D9 will be a uh, Maxon SD9. To show you a little bit more of an in-depth dive of what you can do with the parameters, uh, what I'm going to do is scroll all the way across to something I know has more parameters available. Now we're going through the stereos, and once we see the little crown here on the screen pop up, like that, uh, we get some more control. So I'm going to jump across to the tube drive, which is based on a BK Butler tube drive. Uh, Dave Gilmore fans would probably be familiar with it on the, his sounds. And all I do is hold this button down, just touch it lightly, you don't push the foot switch in, and you'll see now that those three parameters uh, are being accompanied by two more here. And to scroll from these parameters to this one, you just push that button lightly, you'll see the LED foot switch move across, the brackets move across to indicate that this panel is what's selected and then the corresponding knobs assign. So I'm going to pull the volume down to 70%. A little bit lower, just while I muck around with the EQ. And of course we can brighten that up, it's a little more tremolo, uh, with a little more treble I should say, it's not tremolo yet. Touch it once to uh, go across to the original three. A bit more dynamic range, so I'm going to knock the overdrive or the gain down. A bit more bottom end. And let's push the mids just a little bit to kind of walk the line between that overdrive and tube screamer like sound. So that's our setting for that, all based on the tube drive. Now say I wanted to replace the Minotaur with the tube drive, all I have to do is hit the save, like that. And now every time I access this particular preset, the Minotaur or the Centaur has been replaced with the tube drive setting. So that's how you can change on the fly and how you can adjust those settings as you need to uh, when you want to get a bit more detail out of them. Just on adjusting settings on the fly, some people won't like having to bend over and twist knobs during a gig while they're playing. Uh, the Line 6 HX 
uh, gets around that by when you've got a, an effect selected, if you want to edit that without stopping playing guitar, you can hold the edit button down and then you select which pedal you want and we see the, uh, the effects here. So if I wanted to adjust the amount of drive, I mean, let's say it's bass, and you want to adjust, adjust the amount of drive, you can play and then tap the foot switch. Like that. Now obviously if you've done that while you're playing, there's not enough volume, so you tap the page across, select the output. Go hold across to go back to our drive, and we can turn that up from here. Hold the button down, and your pedal board's back to how you're using it. Uh, of course, having it up a little bit here, it's hard for me to show you doing that with my feet while I'm playing, but I thought that was a pretty insane feature to add to a pedal board, particularly when you could have up to nine effects on this running at any one time. So. That's how to get more controls here and how to adjust them without playing the guitar. Uh, maybe the next pedal we should throw up is a delay. So I'll jump over and do that. So I'm gonna run through some of the delays that we've got available. Uh, to pick a delay, I would usually turn my overdrive off because I wanna hear the sound of it the most. We push this button to select a new effect, tap the scroll wheel, scroll down to delay. Uh, I am still in mono, so I'll just leave it like that. And because I can scroll pretty easily, we'll just go to simple delay. Which is pretty cool. You can adjust your time like so. Or you can speed it right up for some slap back. Go even faster than that. A little bit of scrolling going on when you're doing this, but if you in the deeper dive, we'll go into the tap tempos, which makes this way easier. So simple delay sounds. Well, we've got a modulation chorus echo sound. that there, sweep echo. The auto filter kind of going in. A duct delay, this will be based on the TC Electronics 2290, which uh, the delay only comes through after you stop playing. So you can... start to come through which is a pretty cool way to prevent your sound from being too muddy if you're using a lot of distortion. Reverse delay will be pretty popular. And then there'll be a bunch more. We've got some swells, some pitch echoes. The transistor tape is a tape echo which is a type of delay that I tend to use on my own pedal board a lot. like my tape delays super clean so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to just turn the wow and flutter right down which is the modulation and the kind of the grit sound of it and then I'm going to come back here I'm going to turn the mix up so it's way more obvious So you can hear that decay in the tape-like sound that makes that characteristically a tape echo. 
Uh, if you wanted to go further than that, we've got a bucket brigade, which would be based on the Boss DM2. We've had the DM2 W Waza on the channel, and I've got the DM2 on the pedal board that I'm building as well. So you can hear that it decays pretty quickly. Let's make it really noisy, as some of them tend to be. A bit more feedback, and a longer time. So you can hear that signal dies pretty fast. A little bit of noise coming through there. If you were running something like the overdrive with it, you would hear more of that as well. Bucket Brigade delays. Uh, what else have we got in here? Multi-taps, reverse delays. These are all the stereo settings. And then once we push through, we get into the Legacy products, which as I mentioned, is part of their four series pedals. And uh, the multi-head was the tape delay on that one that I used. Head two on, more feedback. See what other settings we've got in there. Yeah, okay. So you can do extra heads, three and four, which give you different delayed repeats, uh, allows you to add multiple delays. This is similar to the multi-head delay features we showed on the Mad Professor Dual Blue Delay. Pretty cool, subtle delay, but gives you some great rhythmic sounds. And then we go back, and that'll be almost to the end of the basic delay settings there anyway. Again, if you see a particular setting or you've read about a particular type of delay you'd like to hear on this one, leave a comment below and I'll get into it on the next video. So moving on from delays, I'm gonna look at a couple of the modulation effects. Again, to add a new pedal, we just push that button once, tap the scroll wheel, we go down to modulation and then we can get all of our modulated settings. There are tremolos, chorus, phases, flanges, all sorts of cool stuff in here. Uh, a six, 60s bias tremolo is a pretty great sound. Super lush tremolo sound. I'm a pretty big fan of a harmonic tremolo though, so I'm gonna go up to here like that. It's a little bit smoother sounding. Let's see, I'll select that one, and then we've got our speed, intensity, and our waveform. Let's change the waveform to a triangle, which is the mode I use on the Empress Tremolo that I love so much. So the Tremolo waveform only stays at the peak for a very short amount of time. Well, that sounds pretty cool. Let's have a quick look and see if there's other... There's a lot of other settings there, which I'm not going to get into, but... I just wanted to kind of show you get a lot of options when you go into the deeper settings, but if you are just punching something together really quickly for a jam or to get started, you can just scroll through like I'm doing now. Uh, vibrato. Got phaser. Mm -hmm. 
So, so far I'm getting, I mean, everything sounds pretty good to me. I definitely think there's some tweakability that I'd like to get into as far as adjusting the mix, the level, the thresholds of each effects to really tune it to what I'm used to by using individual pedals. But so far it's all sounding pretty good. I do like the Cordeson Flanger, which is based on the Electro Harmonics Deluxe Electric Mistress. Uh, Maxon make a pretty great version of this. Guy Tone make a pretty great version of this in a simple pedal form. My pet hate about these pedals normally is you can't adjust the mix of them. So being able to go into the deeper settings and adjust that here where you can kind of bring a little bit more of that effect in. Let's make that a bit more obvious. Let's turn the rate up, turn the color up. Turn that mix up so you can hear what that difference is. So normally this is all preset in a pedal and you can't change it. And that by itself is not particularly versatile, but if you dial it right down, you get a pretty cool mix that allows you to use that way, way weirder effect in a more subtle manner. So I've had a request from my producer to show that with a bit of overdrive. Great distorted spinning speaker. There's another model here as well. Leslie cabinet and a tape delay would be pretty cool. It sounds pretty lush to me. There's so many settings in here to go through which we can get into into the deep dive but there's really a lot of options there in your modulations. Uh, there's weirder stuff, there's phases, flanges, vibratos, and then we get into a bit more of the other products, but so far it's sounding pretty good. I'd be really happy building a sort of rock blues, kind of psychedelic sound using at least those three settings and uh, all those three effects. Uh, they sound pretty good to me. So next we're going to move on and do some reverb sounds. I think it's good to focus on the delay modulation and reverb because the alternative for me uh, on buying a pedal like this would be to use something like the Strymons or the Bosses. It is worth noting at this point that uh, two Strymon pedals would be quite a bit more expensive than this entire pedal. Uh, certainly if you were to have a Timeline, a Mobius and then Big Sky, you'd be looking at about double the price of this and you can have as many presets in this as you can the Strymons. It's, you don't need to plug them in, everything's already connected and you can stack all of those effects together and use them at the same time. If you wanted to have six delays running here you could, which you couldn't do with the Timeline or any of those modulation pedals. Uh, so having showed you the delay and the modulation sounds, the next one makes sense to me is the reverb. So again we tap a foot switch to get into a new pedal. We scroll through our menu down to reverb here. I'm going to pick mono reverbs and we get some reverb sounds. So that definitely sounds good enough to get going. The glitz model it's called. Certainly sounds like reverb. Uh, Ganymede, I'm not even going to pretend to know what that is. Uh, 
much bigger sound. What else have we got? Searchlights. Now I was playing around with this one the other night actually. It's got a pretty insane decay. Pretty haunting sound. I think if you're into ambient sounds and soundscapey kind of stuff, that would be pretty cool. Just for scientific reasons, let's punch the rotary speaker on as well. Uh, that definitely works. <laughs> so we're back to the searchlights. What else have we got? Plateau or Plato? It's going to be a plate delay, a plate reverb, sorry. It's quite a bit of pitch shifting going on. See, yep, okay, so there's a pretty nuts amount of control under the hood there. Three, six, nine, twelve parameters for that particular setting. It's a little bit bright, so I'm gonna just turn that tone control down. Getting a plate delay, I'm gonna punch that pre-delay up. Just increases the amount of time between my note and when the reverb comes in. So there it's pretty quick. If we push that up to, what do we get to, 200 milliseconds? Pretty cool if you're running a lot of gain. And then a double tank, so tank reverbs, that'll be like an oil can, I think. A bit of a pitch shift on there, like the Maris that we did. Very haunting sound, I like that. Uh, the glitz we had a look at, now we're going through the stereo versions of those pedals in the first menu, and then we get into the legacy products. Again, this will be from their M series pedals like the M9, the M13. Uh, plate delay, we did a bit of a sound already. Echo chamber. Pretty subtle, at least on the preset that comes out of it. Uh, cave, that's going to be big. Definitely. I wonder if I can make that a bit louder though. So we're going to just punch the mix up to 50%. And then go back to where we were. Very clean sounding reverb, I like that. Really crisp, there's no modulation. That's pretty nice. Uh, a ducking, we've got octo. Another pitch shifting reverb. Should be pretty similar to the uh, ice style delay that I showed on the Strymon timeline in a previous video. Uh, 63 spring, that'll be a fender reverb. Mm -hmm. 
So that's a pretty good sound. That's probably gonna be a good one to have on maybe all the time uh, if you're not using any external amplifier or external reverb to give you that genuine amp-like sound. More springs, particle verb. Particle verb sounds pretty interesting. Another pitch shifting or really long decay. Well, do that button says stable hazard. Okay, Let's throw some delay on that. probably one I'm gonna to have to have a bit more of a play with. That sounds pretty cool if you're doing just ambient sounds. Uh, you definitely wanna dial it down with some other effects, but particle verb. Right. That's pretty cool. And in a stable condition preset, it's uh, not sterile, but much simpler to listen to. So the next set of effects are pitch effects. So I'm going to hit our new foot switch, tap the menu, roll down to pitch slash synth sounds, accept that, accept mono, pitch whammy. I, I'm a pretty big fan of the whammy pedal, so let's try that one first. What you can't see is I'm using a Line 6 uh, uh, specific model expression pedal from Mission Engineering, which I'll show a photo of in the blog. And once we do a bit more deep diving on using an expression pedal to control all of the parameters within an effect, we'll show a bit more specific footage of that. But for now, that's what's plugged in and that's what is allowing me to change the pitch like this. So we've got a few options here, and I'm showing this mainly because the Digitech Whammy doesn't allow you to have an adjustable pitch uh, mix. This definitely does, and we can change what the expression pedal does in the heel down position. So when you've got your heel all the way back on a Whammy, there is no pitch adjustment. It sounds like this. So zero for no change in heel. And then we've got our toe position is 12 semitones up, which is pretty cool. But if you wanted to say, not go a full octave down, you can do that. Uh, again, that's a pretty unique feature, and I think that would be worth, I mean, a whammy is $400 or something. Having one of those in here on top of what you get out of the other effects makes it incredibly valuable, uh, and of course solves the problem of being able to have so many presets available that uh, the whammy just doesn't have. So that's our whammy pitch shifter. That's pretty cool. Uh, a twin harmony. Let's make that a bit easier on me. Let's go C major. Uh, this one also has a pitch, so let's also set that to, a, to C major. Rather. Doesn't like that seventh. <laughs> yeah, definitely single notes are gonna be the way to go with any kind of intelligent pitch shifting. That's pretty cool because it does mean you can still play octaves.
playing with your fingers rather than a pick, you can get some pretty cool keys-like sounds. I'll bet there's way more to know about what those twin harmonies do, so let's move a little bit further across. Simple pitch. So this will be a pitch shifter without an expression pedal. You can assign one, I'm pretty sure, but we'll get into that into the deep dive video on pitch shifting. So I guess this will be like your uh, Boss OC3, like Octava. And it does pretty well tracking off chords. Let's go up an octave and... That's starting to sound like a pog. You don't quite have the amount of control over it, but the value for money and getting you interested in what this can do is pretty cool. We did another dual there. Three note generator. Now I was mucking around with this before. Change our sine wave. don't have a useful use for that at the moment, but that's pretty cool. Gives you some real synth-like options. There's also a four oscillator generator, which is a very similar product. Uh, now we're through the stereos. In the stereo modes, uh, which I haven't gone into at all, you could be running one pitch to one channel and another pitch to another channel, running two completely independent signal paths. That'll be a bit more of a specific video. Bass octave. Cool, that's another good little octaver sound. Octisynth. If you're playing some synth-like sounds, you're in a band playing covers, uh, maybe a keys player is off doing something else, that's a pretty cool option to get you those huge sounding single note and riff lines. Synthematic. That's pretty cool. Synth strings. Another great ambient sound. That's pretty awesome. And then uh, the last one will be Growler. <laughs> Cool little auto wah, like the Digitech synth wah. And then some auto wah settings there, which I'll get a bit more into into the deep dives. Cool, mystery filter. That'll be like the Mysterious Ways from U2 sound. Voice boxes. Yeah, okay, cool. There's, there's a lot of stuff there. So next I'm going to show you the wah sounds. Again, I'm just using the Mission Expression pedal that is specific to Line 6. Uh, I'll go into why in the deep dive video. But to get to that, I'm going to replace the synth and filter pedals with that. So what I'm going to do is I'll just hit that button here, and I'm going to scroll back a menu, back a menu, and then I can go down and pick wah. Wah's in mono. It looks as though that is only the two choices, mono or stereo. Um, okay. So I do notice that the screen uh, indicating the position is a little bit slow to catch up with what I'm doing but the pedal itself responds exactly as I would expect it to, so...
So that's pretty cool. What else can we do there? That is just the only settings. So we'll go across to the teardrop, which will be another style wah. Different tonality. Not as sharp sounding as the Vox. Let's try some overdrive with that. Might need a little more volume out of the overdrive. Something I haven't gotten into on the video so far is you can reorder all of the effects. So if you have played around with having wah before or after distortion and overdrive and decided that you like both positions and you're just not sure when you want to do it, uh, you can have a preset on here where the wah is before and then a preset where the wah is after and the options are almost limitless. So before I get too far through that, there are definitely a lot of ways you can combine those two effects together. Let's go back to the teardrop. What else have we got? Phasal, that'll be a crybaby wah. I can see here that we've got some adjustments to change our low frequency. And a high, let's be careful about smashing that too much. Yeah, super bassy in that bottom position. So you're changing the frequency response, so you're going to get a really accented sound depending on whether you're in the low or the high position of the heel. Just a quick look, and there's a bunch of other settings in there too. A mix control and a few others. Uh, Chrome Weeper. So that'll be voiced differently as well. It looks as though we've got a pretty similar set of controls though, so we can get a bit more stuck into that down the track. Uh, what do we got? Teardrops, let's go into some of their legacy. Oh, they won't be legacies. Some of... Conductor. So that's a pretty honky sound, a lot more mid-range being accented. Sounds like the taper or the way that the wire is increasing when I move my foot is different as well. I like that. Almost, almost talk box like kind of style. Colourful will be a colour sound. Try without the overdrive. Do we get any different parameters? Very similar set of parameters to adjust. Just a different voicing. So of course, if you're uh, if you're playing different guitars and you want to use different voicing wires, normally you'd have to pull that wire off your pedal board or just kind of make do with uh, the, a common wire. Uh, the option would be uh, trying something like a Dunlop 535Q where there are a million settings. The problem with those is that a lot of those settings are only accessible via underneath the pedal, whereas you could have a preset set up in the Line 6, uh, the HX, for one particular guitar, and then you could save that set of sounds and copy it to another bank, and then make any tweaks for a guitar change. Make sure your tone is always on point, and uh, you're gonna cater for different pickups and different amp sounds, but still have the basic set of effects that you like to use. Wire is gonna be one of those effects that will, um, your choice of the particular style will vary a lot with the guitar. So I think that makes it a very functional product. Vetter. Veta is a Line 6 trademarked word, it was, would have been part of their Veta amps, so I think that that's where they've brought that from, is one of their pod products probably. 
Let's move a drive in. Cool, I like that as well. Uh, Veta. Throaty. Very different sweep to that. Cool. There's a million sounds in there as well. All right. So as far as a bit of a quick overview or quick overview as the case may be, uh, the only thing I'm not going to show you is volume settings, uh, the compressor and the EQs. They are, there's a lot more involved in setting them up and as far as bringing this out of the box and getting sounds out of it, I think they're a little bit irrelevant for now. So I'm gonna jump from the wahs back and show a couple of the fuzz sounds and a the heaviest distortion that I can find. So to do that, again, we just need to push our button here. We can scroll up, we go back a screen, we go back a screen uh, into distortions, mono distortions. Make sure my volume doesn't smoosh us. And then let's scroll down to Bit Crusher. That sounds like a bit of fun. Okay, yeah, so there's a lot of settings there. So it's a pretty gnarly sounding fuzz. Industrial fuzz will be a loud one. Let's just get to the volume, like so. This will be based on the uh, ZVEX uh, Fuzz Factory, which has a crazy amount of control. This will be the sound of uh, Muse, for the Muse fans out there, he uses the ZVEX Fuzz Factory quite a bit. Which is basically a, a, an older style fuzz that is really having a hard time doing its job. There's so much you can tweak and change in those. Triangle Fuzz will be a big muff, arguably one of my favourite pedals of all time. It's not arguably, it is my favourite pedal of all time. Sounds like a big muff to me. Uh, I have a lot of big muffs in my silly fuzz pedal collection, so uh, I'll just see if there's any other settings there. So it's only those three sustain, tone, and level settings. We'll do a deep dive where I compare this with a couple of triangles that I've got, and we can get a little bit more finite on exactly how they stack up. DS1. Modified DS1, the Hedgehog D9, which I showed a little bit before, I think. Cool. And then we'll get into some of the legacy products, which will be but, 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 not stereo, overdrive classic. Fuzz Pie will be the other f uh, big muff in there. Heavy distortion. Uh, the heavy distortion is their take on the metal zone. Which sounds pretty metally. Uh, we can scoop those mids right out. Uh, 
I suppose it's going to sound a bit more like... It's going to respond a bit more like the HM2 rather than the MT2 because the MT2 has a pretty crazy EQ section. One of the things I'll get into on the deep dives is showing how you can add a graphic EQ on top of this effect and toggle them with one foot switch to get you that uh, metal zone light control over the distortions and the fuzzes. So that's the basic overview on the HX. Uh, I'm pretty impressed. I think there's an insane amount of control here. There's just as many effects, presets, and options in this as you could want from any number of Stompbox pedals. Uh, it's definitely one of the best that I've heard as far as the reverbs and the delays and the amount of control you have over those rather than what you get in the Stompbox. Uh, it is menu-driven system, so uh, we'll get more into the specifics in the deep dive, but certainly at first glance, I would pretty much love to have one of these on my pedal board. I haven't spent enough time with the overdrives and the distortions and fuzzes yet to know uh, if I would like to have them just for my own ears, but certainly so far, everything I've heard, you could be playing gigs at any size stage in the world with one of these and you are not gonna have any problems. In fact, you may have less problems because you can save your presets, there's nothing to plug in. The thing is tiny, it'll fit in your carry-on luggage. You could probably get it to fit into some guitar cases or into the pouch on the back of a soft case. It's really an insane quality product. Uh, I would probably be buying one just on what I've spent on these in the last couple of hours. Yeah, it's, a, it's super cool. Uh, I like, you can na label everything, you can name everything. Um, yeah, it's, uh, for somebody that loves stomp boxes, I think these are absolutely worth checking out. Of course, if you want to check one out for yourself, you can follow the link below. If you're on the fence or you're just as keen as to hear what they do as I am, then hit that like, share, subscribe button. Follow us for the next few videos where we go into those deeper dives. As I mentioned, if there's something you would like to hear more specifically, let us know in the comments and I'll try and push towards that uh, a little more specifically for you. We appreciate any comments and feedback you do have, so don't hesitate there. Don't forget to check out the blog. I'm gonna have to be careful about how much time I spend writing about it, but it's, uh, I'll definitely go into a bit more detail. So thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.